Right, so we're back now having changed the capacitors now throughout. So there's three in the radio I've just done which we're waiting for. Um, I'd already done the one I'd been waiting for on the preamp. The power supply ones under there are done and the, the main reservoir capacitors are also done. And again these read okay but um, they're all starting to be a bit nasty underneath. And I just know if we didn't change them all then it would no doubt do something amiss. I think we're alright with these buttons. When you actually start pushing the chassis back together it was catching on the front and because uh, it's going to be held rigid by the metal of the top um, I, I think that isn't an issue at all it's just something which has happened because it's on the service bench. So what I'm going to now do I'm going to get a cassette player out and um, we'll see whether it works on that auxiliary input. We'll then try it with a record turntable and then I think we will leave it on overnight. Um, I'll put the bottom on it and leave the top off. What I've done is to go around and feel things to make sure that they, they don't feel hot or they feel equal. It's like the transistors here, they are certainly above ambient temperature but they're equal to the other ones in other parts on the other channel. Try not to blow myself up. You see that's slightly warmer than that one, that's slightly warmer than that one. I can't do bias adjustments and things like that and hopefully we've not altered anything which alters any of that. Uh, we just have a circuit diagram, we've got no full manual. So, there we go still works incredible right there's a bit of wow and flutter on my realistic scp8032 cassette player but left channel right channel well that's uh I'm trying to put B side on, it's one of these bi directional things. Right, well, it works on cassette, so that means the auxiliary input is, is correct. So now what we'll try it is on phono. Let's see if I can find a ridiculous B-side that the copyright police don't uh, do. I thought I really ought to be playing playing the church organ, recording it and playing it back. But um, uh, things of me playing, but um, I really can't be bothered. To, I'll just have to have silent patches if it gets caught. So I'm going to try uh, this with the with this. Oh, I'll just move the viewfinder around so I can see what I'm showing you with this uh, test record from about 1960 which is a stereo test record um, having connected this up to the phone now we've got to have white to yellow red to white and an earth lead this is open it's picking up a bit of a hum because of that but that's not the amplifier it is definitely the way it's connected so this is the only turntable I've got with a magnetic cartridge that we can kind of use. Greetings to all record enthusiasts. While you are playing this test recording, please seat yourself in a position between the two loudspeakers at the same distance from each. The distance from your seat to each of the loudspeakers should be about the same as that from one loudspeaker to the other. In order to test the symmetry and correct positioning of your apparatus, will you now please regulate the volume of the sound on the two channels so that you appear to hear my voice from a distant point 
directly in front of you, equidistant from the two loudspeakers. The I'll tell you what we're going to do. Be reversed. I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to put the camcorder in this position in the middle. It's, it is stereo and it will help the test. The voice should still appear to come from a spot midway between the loudspeakers throughout the whole of the recording, provided that you do not move from your position at right angles from the central spot between the loudspeakers. Having equalized the two volumes of sound, make sure that each loudspeaker is placed at the correct angle. You should hear the trumpet in the following musical example, only from the left and the guitar only from the right. Should their positions be reversed, you will have to change over the pickup connections into the amplifier. For safety's sake, we will now repeat the test. First left, then right. The test which now follows facilitates the establishment of the same frequency response on the two channels. The sound quality of the two speakers has to be identically matched. The music that you will hear now comes in turn from the right hand and left hand loudspeakers. Adjust the treble and bass controls for both channels until the tone quality from both channels is found to be identical as well as satisfactory. I think we'll leave it at that point. Now I do think that this is slightly weaker on the right hand channel on record and it wasn't on radio or cassette. So I'll tell you what we're going to do, we're going to put a signal generator on this and an oscilloscope and we'll see whether it's true because of course it could be that the cartridge is low, uh, lower on the right hand channel to the left and there you go. Because this is something the customer was talking about. But I th thought he said it was dead on one channel. But then the amplifier was very weak on the right hand channel before we did the capacitors. So we'll see. I'll get the oscilloscope out. Right, so what we've got this is got this on the right hand channel. And although it's the, the lights and all that, oh, I'll just move that around. What we've got is I've adjusted the volume on the ra on the radio on the amplifier look till it's exactly six divisions so I can alter that that is exactly six divisions we look at 400 Hertz and what we're looking at uh, I think it's 200 millivolts per division anyway it doesn't matter what the measurement is it's whether it's the same so I'm now going to swap this all over for the other channel so we'll start by taking the oscilloscope off and putting that onto the other channel the oscilloscope should now be on the other channel and then we'll simply, it's the black one, yeah. So that's the earthy end. Well, that neatly disproves my theory because now.
on the left hand channel is actually slightly quieter so my illusion that the right hand channel was weaker is misfounded now I am sure there's nothing that can be adjusted isn't that interesting how you you think one thing and it's the opposite let's have a look at the circuit diagram the right way up so we don't have any adjustments in the preamp which is the which is this part portion here you've got three trans transistors per channel and it's just resistors and capacitors we've done the capacitors and of course it has restored operation one way or the other and then if we look at tone control it's an active cone tone cone control it's an active tone control and it has one two three four transistors per channel so I'll just quickly look at that I don't think there's going to be any adjustments what's that switch I don't know what linear does but it's changed the, I, I, I had that in for um, the previous channel and I'll keep it in for this channel don't know what it does Obviously you've got adjustments on the power amplifier but they, they need reference to the service manual to adjust them. No, that's... Uh, I'll tell you what we will do. We'll see whether there's any difference on the auxiliary input. So all I'll do is swap the input. So obviously I'm going to have to put more signal on. Now I've set it for four divisions on this on auxiliary input. I could set it for what I want, but we'll set it for four and we'll leave it at exactly there. Now I'll switch the channels over again to the right hand channel. So that's the oscilloscope now on the right hand channel. So I've got exactly the same. So on phono, minutely less on the left hand channel, but I heard it as less on the right hand channel. And that just tells me that it could easily be my cartridge, which isn't 100% equal on both channels. So I'm satisfied that this is working properly what's that? 4 kilohertz go back to 400 right we'll leave it at that but if you just did the the um, well, we're not on the right input really for that if I back up the volume if you just did a casual test like that it would work. whoops and radio, well, we've heard that. I've not got an air along, I'll just put a prod on. left absolutely equal but I just wanted to prove there was no ridiculous mismatch between the two channels right there we are that's the Sonad 
So now the car is the car's beat today. So now four thousand. We'll get that put together and back to the customer. It's going to be an overnight test. Thanks for watching. I know it's not what we normally cover. Audio amplifier from about 1973.